Hey, my name is Jen Mitzi. I wanted to come forward and talk about my near-death experience. Uh, I know there's a lot of people coming forward right now with their stories, and I feel like I it's the right timing. Uh, there's so much darkness in the world right now. I think people need to focus on the light, and that is what people who have been through near-death experiences are here for. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about my first near-death experience, which was kind of two-in-one. So it's a little bit lengthy, but it's pretty interesting. Um, I I don't even know what to say. It's just, it was crazy to go through. So um, I had been diagnosed with leukemia at the age of 13 uh, in 1995, and I started to undergo pretty aggressive treatments for the leukemia. Um, sorry if I pause because it's pretty hard going back to the memories of this it was pretty intense so just bear with me um, so when I finally started the aggressive treatments part of the um, protocol was intrathecal methotrexate which is spinal taps with chemotherapy um, this was to prevent any cancer from going to my brain well when they started these you know, I was getting, I, it felt like one every week. I don't know, to me, that's what it felt like. But uh, after about six months, I was about to start my first round of radiation to my brain. I actually still have marks on my face where um, they tattooed me permanently for that. And uh, so I went with my mom to go get the first round done. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I couldn't hold my head up and we're sitting in the waiting room and I was like the next patient to go I couldn't hold my head up and then all of a sudden my left arm I couldn't hold up and then my left leg and it was like a domino effect and I remember I stopped and I look over at my mom and I said I don't feel good she said at that moment she saw my mouth drooping which she was in home health aid so she recognized that she thought I was having a stroke she ran to the nurse at the desk and told her that I think my daughter's having a stroke. They rushed me back to my my room where my oncologist was, my pediatric oncologist, and they didn't know what was happening to me. The look on his face was horror. He had no clue what was happening to me, how I was still talking to him because I remember asking him because I saw the look on his face. I remember asking, am I gonna die? And he didn't know. They literally had no idea what was happening. Um, I guess my, my left side came back. I was able to talk again. They thought everything was all right. They gave me the go ahead to go ahead and eat because I, I didn't really have that gag reflex. It was sort of like I had a stroke, but I, it started to reverse. So uh, I was sitting there with my father. They finally gave me the go ahead to eat. And as I was sitting there, I remember me and my dad were watching Stand By Me. I will never forget that movie. And my dad was sitting um, like next to the bed watching the movie and I started to eat my lunch and I went to swallow a carrot and I almost choked and I looked at my dad scared out of my mind and I knew it was happening again I don't even know if I uttered it my dad said I started it was like sound like I was gonna cry um, so uh, you know next thing you know I was out my dad said, as soon as he look, I looked over at him to tell him something was wrong, next thing you know, I passed out. Um, from this moment on, I don't remember much. I rem it was like I was in a deep sleep. It wasn't, it was like a peaceful darkness. I was just not scared or anything. Um, but I was in and out of consciousness, and when I was with it, I couldn't communicate at all. But I was all there all there my body didn't work but my mind was perfectly clear and the doctors were trying to do an MRI they put me in the MRI machine but the headphones they put on my head had static and my dad was in the MRI room with me and as I'm laying the MRI and it's, it's just static playing these headphones and I could not tell anybody because I could not communicate because they thought I wasn't there <laughs> they thought I would just unaware of everything around me and I wasn't I was fully aware um, what else? okay then after that uh, they put the headphones on me 
it was static and it was like driving me crazy and I remember with all my might just kicking my feet as much as I could to let somebody know somebody know because it was freaking me out and finally my dad said he noticed my feet moving he jumped up and literally started to pull me out of the machine they came out I remember they sat me up they gave me a dry erase board and a marker to try and let them know what I was trying to say but my hands were both like clawed up I couldn't I didn't have use of my hands so I couldn't write what I was trying to say and um, I just started crying I started crying because I thought I was never gonna come out of that I thought this was it like I was gonna be stuck in this body fully aware and that was it that was it and I remember them not wanting to give me much anesthesia um, to knock me out for the spinal tap that they did because they were afraid I wasn't going to wake up if they did that. All of this happened, my dad said, within a matter of three days. And then I woke up to my entire family around my bed saying goodbye to me. My aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my grandparents, my parents, brothers, sisters, everybody around my bed saying goodbye to me. And I remember seeing the look on all their faces and I was just like, you don't have to be sad. I'm okay. Everything's going to be okay. I knew. I knew I was okay. I just was tired. That's all I remember. So, so tired. I didn't really understand. I didn't know how I looked. I was just tired. That's it. But I was safe. I wasn't scared and I knew everything was going to be fine. And you know what? After that it was. I came out of that fully. Um, it took me a minute to get my, my speech back, but I did. I've From then on, I've always known how to help myself no matter what. Because I have an inner guidance and I have just, I, I know that I'm not this body, you know, that uh, I am the light and we all are. And I think that's why a lot of near-death experiencers are coming forward because our world is a little bit dark right now. But you all need to know that you're not alone. None of us are alone. After that experience, and I got up and I walked away, I gave my entire life to God. And I will do anything to help anybody because I know how scary it is to be in the dark and feel alone. But ultimately, I knew I wasn't alone, and I knew I'd be okay, and here I am. So, it was just, it was a crazy, intense experience, and it shaped me into the person I am today. Um, so, that's my story. It's pretty insane, and it's kind of hard to even wrap my head around it sometimes, and I, I don't know. I, it's just been... I followed my life in such a certain way because of what happened to me, because I got this insane second chance on life that no matter what I go through, nothing will ever be as bad as being trapped in my body. That's literally, every everything else is fine. Nothing else could be that bad. So, um, yeah, I just spread lots of love and light to everybody and know that, listen, we're in the dark right now, but sometimes you have to go through the dark to get to the light. We'll get there. I love you all. Take care. Bye.